in nature, if you leave a tree to grow near a building and you go away from the building and don't cut the grass, the tree will overtake the building. <laughs> the tree just lifted up. I, think, I hope the camera caught that because that is like, yes, better watch out. <laughs> This little nut has become a nightmare for thousands of women. It takes over a gallon of water to grow just one home. Already lost a quarter of wild beasts. Why do I need this? Yes. The Every day, the pets were used to make a criticism. Has anyone else thought about the idea that we were all groomed from a very young age to be members of a cult? And by cult, I mean the idea of trading 40 to 50 years of your life for maybe. 10 or 15 years of freedom once you're too old to actually enjoy it. And if you question this cult, if you question this traditional model that we were all tricked into believing was the only way to do things, you're considered crazy or you're considered someone that doesn't really want to work or someone that's lazy. And in reality, you're just trying to think critically and ask yourself, is this really the best way to do things? Like how is everyone okay with this trade-off? You trade five days for two, you trade 40 to 50 years for 10 to 15, if you're talking about the average life expectancy in the United States, how's that a fair trade? And despite this, everyone goes along with it. Everyone signs up for the, that college tuition. Everyone signs up for them student loans. Why? I don't know. They probably don't even know why themselves. Because it's the only way to do things? It's not the only way to do things. It's just the accepted way to do things. It's just the way to do things when you fall in line and don't question the norm. Welcome to Call for the Truth. I am Lot of the Sun, and this is Tavares of the Sun, and today we'd like to talk to you about passivity. But before we begin, Tavares, will you bring us into the call for the truth? Well, certainly. And we encourage those who are tuning in, join us in the call for the truth. Shall we call forth the frequency of truth? Shall we call to see the truth in all that we see? Shall we call to hear the truth in all that we hear? Shall we call to speak the truth? calling forth the courage to speak the truth. Shall we call forth nothing less than the truth to come forward into our experience? And we are here talking about the truth of passivity. Yes. Just having a conversation last night. <laughs> yes. You know, we kind of spoke about it in the previous podcast. Check that out. And... We are seeing so much happen in front of our eyes. It's like, oh my gosh, they're trying to kill us. Matter of fact, they are. The water's poisoned, the air's poisoned, the food. But it's just kind of this <clears throat> complacent, frozen, staring at the thing happen. No movement, no action, no assertiveness to circumvent the impending <laughs> experience. And uh, this is most of humanity in whatever realm there's even other realms like uh politics economic financial things are happening and people are just frozen watching look what's happening knowing it's not right right so let's let's dive in <clears throat> what are we seeing how do we get this way first off yes like <clears throat> how do we get this way and i'd like to to dive in to more of what is passivity in everyday life because our camera lady she mentioned sometimes people don't even recognize that they're being passive so what would you dive into that's this that's when a bit? the cultivation really works and the conditioning really works you don't even know there's an option mm. when you <clears throat> don't recognize that you're passive it's because the conditioning of your conditions is working yeah you have been so conditioned that it makes sense to stand in line to raise your hand to be quiet to don't put your head up to not interfere with people like and they're the officials. They know what they're doing. That's the cultivation. We've all been cultivated to be the good boy and the good girl. Yeah. You know, how many people say, I'm a good girl. I, I do what I'm told to do. I, 
And my credit score, that pretend number, I'm, I'm on top of that pretend number. I have the pretend calories. I'm on top of that pretend idea. You know, so we're on top of all these things that are not real. These things that have never been and will, will not always be because they're not the truth. So this aspect of ourselves that is passive, we should disobey it. Let us all together disobey the passivity because in nature, if you leave a tree to grow near a building and you go away from the building and don't cut the grass, the tree will overtake the building. <laughs> the tree just lifted up. I, think, I hope the camera caught that because that is like, yes, better watch out. <laughs> There's nothing in nature that just is passive. Even the things that we think are passive are not passive, including things like the trees. Nature will overtake in a very aggressive and assertive way yes. all that can be gained because that is the law. The law is you must gain what can be gained, not where sit in the back and don't say anything just in case somebody wants you to do more than you want to do. All of nature is like, let me overtake that space so then I have more room. I have more to communicate with. I can talk to the other trees. I can talk to the rocks. I can talk to the frogs. I can talk to, you know, everything else in nature. I want to grow more mushrooms. Let me let my mycelium invade everywhere because the truth of nature is to gain what can be gained. Have you ever seen a vine? You ever seen something like uh, a vine, a grapevine or any kind of wisteria or latching on to any and everything will latch now. on and will just grow until it cannot grow anymore, which maybe it grows up one side of the tree, goes to the top and then grows down the other side. Or maybe it jumps over to another tree. This is nature. We are nature. When people uh, stymie us, when people put into our children and into our souls and into our parents and into our grandparents, this stop like just stop that's the passivity like how many times have you looked at a teacher and a teacher looks at you and the word is stop like go sit down go be quiet stop making noise stop moving don't ask any more questions you've said too much young man <laughs> you know speak when you're spoken to all of this is the passivity that is culturally available to us, not only here in our culture, but in all cultures all over the world where we have been herded into silence. So it's not a surprise that when someone says, we're going to get rid of all the carbon on the planet, and we're thinking, well, wait a minute, am I carbon? Ooh, I am carbon. Maybe I should do something about that. I'll just wait and see. Maybe things will get better. And then somebody buys up all the farmland and poisons all the food all over the world. And we're like, well, I'll just wait and see what happens next. Then they uh, continue the process of uh, developing plans that further subjugate laws that unlaw us, the kind of laws that make us uh, not law. The laws of the universe have been obfuscated and now we have these laws that um, push us all into one space where we must behave a certain way and we are to quietly and silently do that. We're going to walk right into our death. We're to line up properly first though and we're to make sure that we don't make any noise while we're on the, on the way into our death. So that's what's happening in the passivity. It is uh, like what happens where some of us are stunned like a deer in a headlight. Like, oh my goodness, they're trying to hurt us. They're trying to poison us. They're giving us things. They tell us on the commercials like the side effects are death. They're saying, don't use this product if you are pregnant. Well, doesn't that, wasn't somebody pregnant with me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, isn't that a, does that count? You know, are you saying that past, present, or future? <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> if, if it's not good for somebody with life, trying to have life, 
how is it that it's good for me? I, I represent life and future life. That's a wild compartmentalization. <laughs> yes. So when we look at the world we live in and we've been so uh, cultivated towards varying levels and varying degrees of subjugation, varying levels and varying degrees of uh, behavior, then when we see someone on camera mistreating someone, we think, if I get involved, something will happen to me. But we forget that there are more of us. There are many more of us who are not the person who's doing the abuse. And that there is no way in which, if we don't give them power, they can have power over us. So the passivity is like watching the, it's like being in the seats of the Roman theater when the gladiators and the lions came out. We're like, ooh, that does not look like a fair fight. Ooh, I wonder what's gonna happen next. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know the inevitable will happen. I'm just a bystander. I can't come against the Roman empire. I can't make them stop feeding the gladiators to the lions, but you can. If you didn't come out to see it, there would be no show to see. So we're living in this reality show where everything we watch on television is cultivated for us to watch it. Every person who's put in front of us to talk is part of a team and there's one team or another team and the two teams are against each other and whoever's writing the scripts, I must say, needs writing classes. I'm, I must say that because the scripts are not that interesting. And it's the same, this show has been running for since 2020. The same show is running, the same, uh, it's not even a sitcom. It's more like a boring reality show with the same characters, with the same uh, conversation. And the, they're trying to give us more action-packed experiences. You know, I expect so that next it. episode, they'll say it was all a dream. <laughs> you know, like, it never happened. It never happened. <laughs> so I like where you're taking this, where this idea of life feels like the movies or the yeah. TV shows. And it is very much that many people have used the term political theater. Uh, and one of the things that came across my mind was how when we watch films of revolution, whether it be things like Star Wars, who are we rooting for? You know, we're not rooting for Darth Vader. We're rooting <laughs> for Luke Skywalker, you know, Anakin <laughs> and these people to... The Force, right? And uh, even uh, Hunger Games, right? We rooting for those who are part of the revolution. And yet here we are in our own movie, stuck, frozen, mm -hmm. not revolting or doing the things that would it be exemplary of how we engage with these films and movies. So uh, we can, uh, what I see is that there's something with the brain that is taking place where there's almost like a disassociation. Uh, and I think we've spoke about that in the past where mm -hmm. because what we've seen in a movie and we identify it as not real, as fiction, we're like, this can't be real. It's, it's almost like it doesn't compute. Does that right. make sense? Yeah, the, the truth is always shown to us in a fictitious way. The, uh, the story is the truth but we've been cultivated to think it's a cartoon or a fictitious idea, but it's really kind of funny. It's like, this is our hero's story. This is the reason we were born. This is why we're here to overcome this level of subjugation. So all of this is to prove to us who we are, not to prove to us how obedient we can be. How obedient can you be now? How obedient can you be later? How obedient can you be in a 15 minute city? How obedient can you be without a car? How obedient can you be without money? How obedient can you be without food? And I like the question, how's that working for you? <laughs> how has it ever worked for us to be passive and obedient? So we know, especially those of us who have been through, uh, ancestries have been through slavery, we know that that is not the way out. Nope. You know, that uh, being quiet and in the corner um, shaking in fear is not the way to victory. That is not the way out. That what must happen is the soul must arise within you. 
think about nature. <laughs> Imagine like you corner an animal, they just put their head down. They don't do that. No. They don't just submit. They yeah. or like you do that to a cat. Even a lap, even a lap head. dog who is designed and cultivated to just be in your lap will yeah. bite you and pee on you. It will, it will do some things for sure. <laughs> and it won't let just anybody come in the house. Yeah. It, it will defend its space. It's so weird, though, because we've been conditioned to think like that is wrong. Right. You are wrong for doing that. But it's so dimensional in its high levels because it can be perceived in um, the grander scope. Because even though we're talking about passivity from the perspective of what humanity is confronted with, we can see this passivity in the everyday within arms reach experiences of dealing with family, dealing with our coworkers. How many times people are passive regarding uh, things that are happening to them at work, the levels of abuse that are taking place and they just don't say anything, they keep their head down and oh, I don't want to stir the pot, you know, I need to pay my bills. And uh, there was a woman I was talking to, she, uh, she said that she was in a situation where uh, there was both a man and a woman in the workplace who were saying sexual things to, the, to her. It was basically sex, sexual abuse at the, in the workplace and she had to stand up and she said that I'm not only doing this for me, but I'm doing this for, I'm thinking about everybody else who will come into this office, new hirees who may encounter this because nobody else will say anything. And uh, so she's kind of like wrapped up in some court case, but she stood her ground, but not everybody's doing that. Most yeah. people will just, you know, so the passivity is happening. And I, I always go back to this idea of we take care of this by taking care of this. Right. Because this, right. our direct everyday experiences, right. passivity with our right. family members, our lovers, friends, coworkers, uh, will affect the greater field of this. You know, it's just like it's trickling and, and uh, reverberating and informing each other. I love the example you gave of the person you just met who was working and is being sexually harassed because I've been in that situation as a young girl and I remember not knowing what to do feeling like I would somehow be in trouble for what they did. You know, somehow they were either older. Like I can remember working at a monastery at the switchboard and the brothers who were in the monastery, the priests would come down and touch my legs. I was 14 years old. And I was like, who can I tell? They're all in the monastery. Yeah. And <laughs> you they're, know? they're authority figures. They were they authority have more power. figures and they were the ones who paid for the switchboard operators and my friend, who was also a switchboard operator, was having the same thing. We were taught keeping notes with each other. I remember what that felt like at 14. I remember I didn't know what to do. I remember uh, people handing me change and touching my hand inappropriately. I remember all of those things, and I don't remember ever saying anything. So I know what passivity looks like. I know what being raised, what we would consider civilized, what that exposes you to, and uh, it does not pay. It would be much better to scream, they're touching me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Look a little crazy out there, it's okay. Yeah, it's it, would, it would have been much better for me. I would have learned more things sooner, quicker, better, and I would have stopped something that maybe somebody else said, oh, she will, she going to scream like that other one did, you know? Mm -hmm. maybe, yeah. yeah. Vibration. We are a universal remedy of support, an ally infused with positive frequencies and biophotonic light particles intended to return one to the greater whole of one's organic nature. Within our layered structure exists an opportunity for metamorphosis, prompting divine healing energies of light to awaken your original composition, that which has been irritated by inorganic substances through mental, emotional, and physical material. We are navigators, those who operate by way of your conscious thought and directive, exponentially moving to the physical areas of stuck emotion within the body that are in need of restoration. When engaged with us, we identify and mirror the called upon frequencies of lower vibratory notion, for it 
to see itself in transmutation, while awakening that which is dormant to shift into the rectification of optimum balance and functionality. So we have not been taught to do that or to protect ourselves because we value, I remember thinking they were more valuable than I was because they were priests, they were brothers, they were part of an organized system. And, you know, they were saying the whole time they're doing that, I'm just checking to see there's enough heat for me a heater. You know, so then there's this, uh, there's this idea of deceit. So I'm encouraging everyone when somebody lies to you or um, tries to maneuver a situation to make you think that uh, something different than what is actually happening, that you do call it out like, are you lying? Are you lying to me? Are you saying that because you want to touch my leg? Are you doing something to me and then saying something else thinking my brain won't figure it out? Because that's what happens a lot of times. That's I, I'm seeing it everywhere. <laughs> and that's Large what scale, happens. small scale. They think so, you're stupid. It, so it, it's, it's this idea of they know you're passive. Mm. I don't know if they think you're stupid. Yeah, that you, oh, this person won't do anything. They will allow and permit this. Yeah, and, and it's like a little at a time. I'll, I'll just put my hand over here. Oh, I just brushed against you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all of that kind of thing. And that's where it begins until eventually the government's brushing against you and killing all the chickens, you know, until there's no more meat to be yeah, had is, and all the bar. <laughs> yes, it but, is like they all up on <laughs> leaning on. You ever see people fall asleep like they they're on us? And you're like, off. <laughs> that would be the idea. Like, wake up and move off of me. Yes. Yeah. So unless until we're ready to disobey the passivity. So we're ready to stop being enslaved by our own cultivation, our own civilization, our own what we think is in good manner. It's not in good manners to scream at somebody, but I encourage you scream. I encourage you, hey, everybody, come look what they're doing over here. Come look and see who I am. Come look what they're doing. Look what they're doing to you. Look what they're doing to every aspect of our life. Look where this train is going. Release the passivity, disobey the passivity, let go of being what you have been cultivated to be as a good little slave, silent. Let go of that. It does not pay. You do not, sh shivering in the corner, shaking in fear will not protect you. Passivity will not protect you. Being quiet while the lion eats you doesn't keep you from being eaten. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Ah, help! Somebody, lion. Uh, question. I got a question for you. So, flip side of passivity. Um, I was looking up the idea of assertive, and I was looking the idea of aggressive. Because assertive, from my understanding, is that balance between the passive and the aggressive, where there is consideration of all parties including self because passivity is where you don't care about yourself you're putting the needs of other people before you aggressive is like i don't care about what nobody think and i'm willing to like stump on people i'm i'm i'd like to make a very a, a little bit of a change in that i see that that's dominance not assertiveness like i i agree that yeah. I'm, I'm associating what a, what you're saying is dominance i'm associating that with aggressiveness i think that um assertiveness is that balance yes. without the dominance it, but it's like you clear on what is going to be for you and like oh excuse me get out of the way i'm not going to slap you but i'm not we're not doing this yes and and this is what our guidance has just brought forward this recently in not just in this way but this idea of why do you think you have testosterone why do you think men and women have testosterone on earth? Well, they're sort of like... <laughs> so you can get stuff done. You know, so the masculine, the divine masculine is this 
embodiment of assertiveness to make sure that things can happen, the divine feminine is this level of a response to that, which may look like passivity, but that's not the space we're in. What's happening now is the male and the female are both in hyper passivity. Yeah, so that's we're that's in even hyper a thing. passivity where we're not standing up for the reality that we're responsible for our own lives. We are the responsible party for our own lives. We must stop each, and we have to teach the children to stop people who are trying to aggress us and take away our life by fractions or degrees or full course. And so this idea of Finding balance between the masculine and the feminine is so important. We have certain um, hormones and certain aspects and mechanisms in the body, but also in the soul that are uh, generated so that we can be human. Human means we're not uh, asphalt. <laughs> we're, we're not meant to be trod upon. You know, that's not uh, conducive. The idea of a human, the reason people say namaste is, I see the God in you, you see the God in me, we say in Lakesh, I see in you the divinity in you. Where is that in play in our world? Where is it that I will honor you and you may honor me? Whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, whether you're in a couple, whether it's your government, whether it's your team, whatever it is you, that you're connected with, where is the aspect of creation that arises from we are part of creation <laughs> you know what i like to say who's your daddy creator your daddy then you need to be the child of creator that is the hero in this story the child of creator masculine or feminine both polarities exist in the same way we have a left brain and a right brain both polarities must be supported and the two together birth the birth all life. So looking at the sun as the assertive aspect of creation that will give direction and purpose to what is in the fertile soil of mother nature. And then it may grow with that information from the soil through the direction of the sun is a beautiful and wonderful thing. But when we are passive, we lose all that. We lose the idea of what the two polarities of creation are. This is not opinion. You know, yeah, the sun is, exists. This is law. Yeah, it is it's law. Principle. It will always be and has always been. That is how you know what the truth is. It, it has always been law and it remains law. And it is within us as part of the creation principle to exert those things within us that come to us naturally like testosterone, like assertiveness. And there is this level of idea of uh, passivity, but the hyper passivity that the world has become, where it just being pushed around is out of balance and it is a death blow. We cannot survive the force that will run us over as asphalt. So, I think this is a um, good food for thought and gives people much to consider. The solution would be in every situation, we say honor, respect, and gratitude is your, is your baseline. Are you being honored? Are you being respected? Are you being given gratitude? Is that within, you know, do you get one of the three? Can you get two out of three? Can you get three out of three? <laughs> you know, are you teaching your children? Like, don't let people just push you aside and knock you down and step on you and hit you with blocks. That's not appropriate. Take that from them and say to them, no, I'm not allowing that. We need to do the same thing we would teach a kindergartner to do. Not allow someone to hit us in the head with a block. And walk away and do nothing. <laughs> and then build up, a, go pile up another bunch of blocks to throw at us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... This is very, very important, this idea of releasing, disobey, disobey the cultivation, disobey the conditioning, disobey the things that don't make you feel good.
Does it feel good to be human? Look at nature, look at the trees, look at the animals. Do they just sit and let everything just happen? You know, just to exist in nature requires a certain amount of assertiveness. You know, I had a funny thought about some of people's quarrel with nature is that it does respond back. You know, some people are scared of little wasps and ants and <laughs> things that are a hundred to a thousand times smaller because, again, it operates within self-preservation. And so even without the direct interfacing, they're like, I don't want them to do with that because I already know I can't control it. Nature will <laughs> That is respond. such a good point that and something is some small as a wasp, as small as a black ant. It's little, but there's billions of them. And even though you're big, you're a big giant, you in charge, you got spray cans, you got poison, you got all kinds of things you can do to them. You are encouraged to be wise. <laughs> so maybe another time we can talk about community because that's what I see. You know, there's a harmoniz harmonization with bees, with ants, colonies, really. That's another word. Yeah, that, like that's actually that word is so appropriate. I would say colony more than community. You know, this idea of we will, as the bees, they will defend their hive. The ants will defend their life. Yes. We should take a key, uh, a play out of the book of other aspects of nature who feel like they're so small. We're the giants in this situation, but we've got sense enough to know don't mess with them. So we, maybe we need to communicate that thought that we may be small, but there's plenty of us. And it's really not about size. I don't know if you've ever seen people get into either an intellectual conversation or a physical altercation, it's not about size. It's about ferocity. Yes. So I've it's seen about... some little people. <laughs> and I've seen some very intelligent minds, you know, come up against brilliant people with degrees and be able to put down what doesn't make sense. So we need to uh, take a uh, a little play out of the book of nature, especially the insects, but not only the insects, all of the plants, all of the other things that seem so passive, but only because we don't know better. She said they're not really passive. Mm -hmm. And most people, even if they say they're passive, they don't want to be left in the jungle alone. Because <laughs> they already know. <laughs> they already know. Yes. The truth is inherent. We need to get us some. I agree. And I think the solution would be to cultivate, cultivate your assertiveness, cultivate your willingness to protect your own life, cultivate being willing to fight for your own survival. Remember, this is your hero's story and that the reality show they're playing is not the right movie for you. So uh, you're going to, I see you are already asking for a card from the Call for Truth deck. To, that yes. really talks about what we're speaking about today, which is passivity and the idea of colonies or communities of like-minded people who can come together and through the coming together, be the strength that's needed to turn the channel from the reality show. And what card do you have? So for clarity, the question was, uh, what is the truth we need to see as it relates to our passivity? And the maxim or the theme is doubt the root chakra our doubt holds back what the universe wants to give and what's interesting about this i think about how we have said we have to go backwards before we can go forward so this um, holographic reality of we got to reestablish the foundation we can't build on top of this right right but like there's doubt within people can we do anything? I don't know. Like, they're so big. No, but we got the universe on our side. We, <laughs> we forgot that we're nature. We forgot that if we wanted to, we could spread out like those vines and yes. those other plants. I think doubt is another word for passivity. You, yes. Oh, you think that you are not big enough, but are you deeply clear enough? You know, when you're 
deeply clear enough, you are big enough. Because the other person has to trump that. They have to be really clear that they are what they are to trump that you know who you are. See, that's part of the assertiveness. Yes. That having the clarity of what you, I know what I'm doing here. You know, and I, I can see where that backs up and um, it informs the universe and gets everything on board. It's also universal law. We all get what we call for. So those of us who call for the clarity and the sovereignty and the uh, strength and the assertiveness to live through this time will. And those who are in doubt are the ones who are in doubt. You are encouraged to move from doubt to clarity. Let your clarity show you the way. Let it make the doubt irrelevant because the doubt will not support you. You can't eat it. You can't live in it. You don't want to sleep with it. You know, it's just not good. So we are being cultivated to think that we're less than we are, but we are part of all of creation. So this is our new studio. We're so happy to be here and it so supports the idea of being in nature. So we are like really in the forest. <laughs> we are like really in the forest and we're happy to get the frequencies of nature. We encourage you to take a look at the principles that make nature, nature. Why has it endured? We thank you so much. And I think this card was wonderful. It so speaks to the essence of what we're talking about today. We will leave you now with the greetings of Inlakesh and Veritas with honor, respect, and gratitude, and look forward to seeing you again in our new studio. Thank you. Inlakesh, Veritas. <laughs>